This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Let's uh, let's also talk about after this tour of Japan, he comes back to Mexico. He's going to mainly wrestle for AAA, teaming with El Hijo del Santo. Hijo and, del Santo. And they're sort of the new version of the Atomic Pair, which is the tag team his father had been in. Eventually, Otamica. after Guerrero turns on Santo, he allies with Art Bar, and uh, they become the pair of terror. And uh, the duo become arguably the most hated tag team in Lucha Libre history, along with Bar, Conan, Chicano Power, and Madonna's boyfriend. Guerrero forms Los Gringos Locos, uh, a villain stable here. And that, I guess that's translated into the crazy Americans. Guerrero later said, no matter how many people joined Los Gringos Locos, the stable was all about Art Bar. Locos feuds mainly with uh, El Hijo del Santo and his, pactor, his partner, Octagon. Eventually, they have a hair versus mask match at the first Lucha pay per view in America when worlds collide. Is, is this more on your radar? Maybe the super Jacob stuff is not, but this tag team pairing of Eddie Guerrero and our bar, boy, this was, uh, something that people talked about for years to come. I can definitely tell you what I remember about this, because this was Howard Finkel bringing tapes in and saying, you've got to see these guys. The emphasis at that time was art bar and it was looking at art wondering if this was something that we might be interested in. I became enamored with Eddie Guerrero because I looked at him and the things that Eddie could do, the way that Eddie walked and the way that Eddie talked and carried himself. Eddie carried himself like Shawn Michaels. And the description that I would always give Vince McMahon was that I thought Eddie Guerrero was just a Mexican version of, of Shawn Michaels as far as how he carried himself in the ring, how he worked, and his performance was phenomenal. So both of them. I, I loved Art Bar too. I thought that the team was great, and individually, both guys were tremendous. Was this, you know, Art doesn't wind up coming into WWE. He's going to get, have a little bit of trouble. He does wind up spending a little time in WCW, but was, was his personal stuff always going to be a hindrance or was it more the size that Vince McMahon would have been hung up on in the era? I think that art could have gotten over that. I think that art with the unique character and, and later on the whole Beetlejuice character and what have you, I think that art would have. That would have been a non-issue with Art as far as his performance. He was 10 feet tall in performance area. So that size, although it wasn't something that we would really gravitate to, it was something that I feel the talent came through and you could make something out of him easily. Eddie had been using what later became known as the frog splash at the time. And, uh, he said he got the frog splash from La Fiera, a Spanish wrestler, but his partner, Art Barr started using the move without Eddie's blessing. And at this time, Eddie had some real issues with art. He said they butted heads and he would stop himself just short of saying he hated him, but clearly there was some challenging moments in their relationship. But when it's all said and done, do you think Eddie Guerrero's frog splash was the best? I mean, besides Rob Van Dam, who else would even be in the conversation? Maybe. Well, I think there's a few people. I think that D'Lo Brown actually had yeah. one hell of a frog splash. But sentimentally, I I would go with Eddie Guerrero because of the way that he did it. It, it just was uh, – it looked like Eddie was not only trying to pin you and beat you with it. It, it was he – it was like a hold for Eddie. It was a spot, but it was like a hold for Eddie. And you believed it when he got up to the top rope and came down on you. Uh, Guerrero and uh, Barr's big break comes when they're noticed in late 94 by the owner of ECW, or at least the booker at the time, Paul Heyman. And they're approached about wrestling for him in 95. Barr, however, winds up passing away before he could actually make the shot with Guerrero. And Eddie would say that Art's death really affected him in a lot of ways. 
including scaring him away from pills, at least for a little while. You know, Art Barr was not necessarily a major name in the American wrestling scene, uh, but he was amongst the hardcores, a well-respected performer. When a guy like that, who maybe hadn't quite made superstardom yet passes away, does it still send shockwaves through the industry? Is it more like a ripple because he just wasn't on everyone's radar? Well, of course it does. And for art, his father, Sandy Barr, had been in the business. So art was also second generation right. and had spent the majority of his career in the Pacific Northwest working for Don Owen had done some other things, um, but really made a name for himself in Mexico and people had taken notice. So art was at a place that maybe things were going to change for art bar and that he would break out of whatever bubble that he had been in for all these years. And people did know art bar and they did, they did like his work because back then I think most people would make a jaunt through the Pacific Northwest and, and, and see Sandy bar and art bar and just, uh, he was the best, best known unknown in the business. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.